welcome to this uh, episode of Totally Unscripted. We are live, and uh, today I'm delighted um, to be joined by uh, my usual co-host, Steve Webster, but also we have Ruth Noshman from uh, Zaps, and we also have Grant Timmerman um, from Google. So, hi, guys. Hey, Martin. And hey, Steve. Martin. Hello. So... Yeah. In this episode um, of Totally Unscripted, we're looking at uh, kind of app script development, and um, there's been a lot of recent developments that make um, development of app scripts away from the IDE um, possible. And um, so uh, a couple of those things include the fact that now uh, the latest Chrome OS allows you if it, you've got a compatible device to, to run and install Linux apps. Um, so um, this opens up a world of opportunities in terms of um, your production of script projects. Um, so what we're going to do today is um, we're just going to start off with a demo of um, installing stuff on Chrome OS um, so that you can do local app script development. And then um, Grant is going to start showing you some of the things that you can do, not only on Chrome OS, but um, any local machine that you can uh, run uh, and then so yeah, hi, thank you. Yes, well, you all know recently Linux was announced on Chrome OS. So we actually, we are working on Chrome OS for several years now with our company and really only Chrome OS devices. We really, really like it. And we did a lot of development on it as well. Um, but usually we're using IDEs on the web, C9, something some um and it worked pretty well for us actually the google apps script environment was always on the web so and we did a lot of work there too but for a few weeks ago there was this uh, linux environment and we we tried it out and actually it's pretty nice to do uh, local development on chrome OS, and it works even better than i thought so now now that it's in in stable channel for for lots of chromebooks already I would think it's nice to just pick a new Chromebook and show you guys how to get to install VS Code, uh, install Clasp, install something to have some Google Apps Script code highlighting that's always easy in development, and just install Linux and see the whole process and how, I think I'll also want to mention how well it's made on Chrome OS. It's just, it feels polished and I, I really like it. So I have this Chromebook, it's just simple Acer. It. It's it's pretty new. It's nothing on there, so I hope everything goes <laughs> as planned. Um, so you can follow the screen. It's it's on full screen now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, well, Chrome, in, in this, in you have first you have to make sure you're on the latest uh, version. I think it's six ninety sixty nine. Um, and just go to your settings, and you will find. Let me scroll down. Oh, just a second. Here it says Linux and beta. So the first thing you really want to do is to turn it on and install it and just wait a bit. So usually this goes pretty fast. I'm not sure how fast it goes in this device. But in between, I can probably tell some stuff. So it's actually installing a sort of Debian um version of um uh, linux so a, a lot of packages and a lot of software is really available on the internet and i will show you also in a second how you install this stuff without using the command line because lots of people just don't like it and you really don't need it for for installing applications that's what i said that's what i like about it being so polished there we go and when it's installed, you'll get a Linux shell. So there we are. So now it's installed. And actually, it's also booted up now. And I always see it when I go to the files uh, application. Let's go here. Files. I, I can close the shell now. We don't need it. So this is actually play files is for Android. Mm -hmm. And Linux files is my Linux files. But there are no files in there. So the first thing that we actually want to do is um, 
install Visual Studio. I'm doing Visual Studio installing first. Let's copy the code. Um, because it, it also gives me a shell to work in. So what I, what I do is I, I download this DB Ubuntu file. So those not familiar with VS codes, um, it's open source and it's free, so there's no yep. cost. I think it's generally, generally people like it, <laughs> as far as I know. It seems to be the editor of choice right now, as far as I've yep. picked up off the wire. So the file is here in downloads. What I do is I put it on, just drag it to Linux files. And what I can do now is just install it or just double click it now. Mm -hmm. And it says install the application. Okay, fine. Installation started. And it, you'll see that it's nicely bringing up the installation of the application. Good. Here it says it says app is available in the terminal. But like VS Code also has an option that it installs itself on the launcher. So you really only have to go here. You see Visual Studio Code is there with a nice icon. Clicked. Now let's open a folder. OK. So now actually we are in a project. Can you see it this way? I shall make it full screen. Maybe it's better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's an empty folder, actually. So now we're ready to, to install Clasp. And we need to install some other stuff. And you can open a console in VS Code by by just pushing pushing Control Escape. Uh, Control Tilde. I'm sorry. That's a Escape. That opens up the terminal screen here, so you can actually run your commands. And to run Clasp, we need Node.js, and I think it's not installed. No, it's not installed uh, by default. Just go to the site. I will share these links with you. NVM is a good uh, package to get the node version manager. I use it all the time, um, especially for detecting which version of NPM you're using. Yeah. So actually, how to install it is it's a matter of copy paste. So actually, I'm going actually use Control Shift V to paste something in here. Uh, not node install, but NPM. <laughs> Now we need to do these commands first. Otherwise, we have to restart the terminal. This, this is just that the NVM command is working the first time. NVM install, and just you can say install eight. It will install node for you. Yeah, it's just <laughs> Casido and PMI Google Clasp install it globally. Yeah. Go. Uh, we don't need sudo here. Yeah, while we wait, um, so CLASP is, stands for Command Line App Script Projects. It's the App Script command line tool that allows you to uh, create, manage, write, and deploy App Scripts um, using your terminal straight from the command line rather than using script.google.com. Um, it was released earlier this year, and um, it's an open source tool available uh, on GitHub uh, under Google. And I'm the primary maintainer, and it's been evolving uh, throughout the months. Actually, to get started, I, I think it was class plugin we had. Um, I'm not not sure because usually this works with uh, with a local host because it runs on the same machine, but with Clasp on Chrome OS it doesn't. I think. See. Um, okay. So uh, you can log in with uh, no local host. Yeah, I know, but usually I do just. Um, I think I opened that ticket. I need a terminal and do control. And then it's okay too. Uh, or you can do that. Actually, so I'm going to this 
end class just knows that I'm logged in out on the other terminal. So, but it, you can use no local host. But it's it's strange that it, that is not working on Chrome OS because uh, other like G Cloud and stuff like that, you can authenticate this way as well. I think it's support number or something like that. The, the to get to get a very small file, I think it's class uh, init. Uh, class create. Class create. Yeah. Because the last thing I just want want to show you is to to show how you can get this app script out complete into VS Code, and after that, I think it's best that you just take over with your version, and everyone has seen how to install class. So we give the script yeah. the time, my script. So to use class, you should enable the app script API, and it's in script.google.com. And your it is actually says installing in Dutch, but it's settings. <laughs> this is probably worth highlighting that a lot of this stuff is oh you just need to do once, and that's it. You've got VS yeah. Code installed, you've got Clasp installed. You can start scripting to your heart's content. I see that that Clasp is creating some files here. So now we can actually uh, create a new file like code GS. You actually see that now it's not it's not showing anything like you are used to on the on the app script interface. So you need to download the definitions for Google App Script. We can find them on npm. There's a package for that. Just you actually get pretty quickly used to using npm to install stuff. If you were never done that before. So what what we can do now to make this work is actually create a new file uh, and just just give it a name. Apps script the js and the only thing we put in here is import google apps script to make vs code know that you want to use it save it and now if you use drive app it says your it has your methods create file Get access, all the stuff you're used to. It's all very, there. It's very nice. So you can actually start coding app scripts like you are used to in the sites app. It's still there. Yeah. So it's it's all it's, it's well maintained, I guess. The issue now is the last thing I want to say is that if you upload this code to Google App Script, it will add your uh, app script JS file. You actually don't want it. So there is you can add a new file again and you can call it class. Ignore and just add app script the JS in there, and then class will not upload it with it. And that's the single part you have to do. So if you have this set of files for each project, you copy them in there, and then you can uh, start playing and scripting. You achieved a lot there, but you you're still you're right with the. Um... The, the app script ID, so you, I, 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 and so you're, you, you know, you don't have access um, to the debugger. But as you've been developing in this way for a while, um, did, do, you, do you miss the debugger, or have you got a workflow for that? I think the main the main advantage of the app script interface is actually the play button for functions. Yeah. And if you write small scripts, then it's really advantage. But as soon as you are starting to write some more complicated code, then it's very nice to just put it here, start here, and and do the, the fine tuning actually in App Script. Just have them both open, code here, uh, upload stuff, go to App Script, refresh the page, and do your testing. Actually, it it works for bigger files. For small files, the, the interface of App Script just does what it needs to do. And I think we are, are pretty used to working there. But it definitely brings some some new possibilities now and creating more extensive scripts and especially if you're building some uh, client side stuff as well, of course, HTML uh, and some client side JavaScript where VS Code definitely 
outshines the, the Google Apps Script Editor by any means. Uh, we've got a question from Alexander. Um, he's saying, I'm not sure that importing types is necessary uh, via VS Code yeah. it itself. So, uh, yeah, I, I might chime in. Um, so I don't think that you need to import the types, or maybe you need to import them once on the beginning of your file. But I think the editor should, uh, once you do that, it loads the types, and it should automatically autocomplete. Um, so I don't think creating a, a separate file might, might not be necessary. I'll, I'll reintroduce myself. Um, I'm Grant. I'm a, a developer platform engineer working at Google. I work on G Suite. So that's everything from uh, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides. Uh, they have APIs, Google Drive, Gmail, et cetera. Um, and in particular, I work a lot on AppScript. Um, so I maintain the GitHub samples for uh, Google AppScript on uh, the GitHub org G Suite devs, as well as uh, the command line tool Clasp that came out uh, earlier this year. So I want to show um, how you can use some of the more advanced features of Clasp, uh, including TypeScript uh, with your type with your uh, AppScript projects. So here I just have a simple slide deck. Um, and you can just go to tools and script editor. And you can see I have a simple um, AppScript project. Um, it's just basic uh, AppScript and some HTML. So this this one, uh, this demo, you first have to say OK. Um, you can manage your slides. It basically allows you to a sidebar um, in which you can translate text from one language to another. So let's say I want this in French. It'll translate the content into French or translate into Chinese. <laughs> and so you can see Google's obviously translates mm -hmm. to Google, but um, the rest translates to Chinese. And so uh, that's powered by this code. Um, let's say uh, so. Let's say you're in this project. I actually pulled it, um, so you can. Can you bump up the font size? Yeah. So yes. here I class cloned the project. Um, which you can just go to file project properties, see the script ID. Um, I cloned it there. And then you can see it creates a class.json as well as uh, code.js and sidebar.js and the app script manifest. Um, to install types, uh, as we saw before, you can just npm install uh, types slash Google Apps Script. Um, and then you'll get this node modules folder. And so you can just go open code. This is Visual Studio Code. And you'll see um, your code here. And uh, you can also see like some um, variables are not used. That's a feature of Visual Studio Code. and syntax highlighting. So let's say I want to complete this. Um, since I've installed the types, I get all this auto completion. Um, sort of just like the uh, editor. Add item. And I'll add UI. So I just copy the back end. But you can see all the, um, you don't have to completely fill out the, the methods. They'll all autocomplete for these types. Um, so let's say you have a GS 
file, but um, so you can see like, this is uh, declared but never used. So let's say you have a um, JS file, but you want to use uh, Lambda functions or uh, async wait or, or some um, fancy ES6, ES7, and ES8, or just TypeScript. Also, the only thing you need to do is change your uh, file extension from code.js or js to uh, ts. And you'll see the file doesn't change. But um, you'll be able to say, hey, this is a constant. And if I try to say uh, set it to something else, uh, type Visual Studio Code, as well as other, other editors will say, you cannot do this, it's a read only property because it's a constant. Um, let's see, you can convert this to an arrow function, as well as all of your functions into arrow functions if you like that um, syntax. Um, and let's see, also I have, uh, and so this is the project uh, Google Clasp. I have a guide on TypeScript on all the different features in, uh, which you can use with your uh, AppScript project. So, um, so TypeScript, first of all, it's a, a superset of JavaScript, um, which can compile down to plain AppScript. So it's a bit of a advanced um, layer on top of AppScript, but um, on top of JavaScript, but it allows you to do some cool things like uh, um, you can have arrow functions, optional threshold typing, classes, type inference. So um, it'll the identifier will be identified as a certain type. You can have interfaces, so you can say this method must return some object of this certain shape and a bunch more. Um, this was, TypeScript support was released, I think two months ago or something. Um, and allows for existing projects as well as new projects to use TypeScript. So as I just showed, um, you can simply just rename your file from, um, from GS to TS. And in fact, when you class push, uh, you'll see all the files. It's pushing code.ts, which um, is right here. And when you actually open that file, um, you'll see that you'll have these two lines um, that uh, support uh, node modules so that you don't, if there's any um, module that is using exports or module, those keywords, uh, it won't break the script compiler. Um, but the code will look relatively similar. We'll see there's vars instead of the cons, which I think we said there. Um, and, uh, the code will be pretty much the same. So I, I guess with it's been announced that um, Google Apps Script is going to move to, um, I think it's the V8 engine, which will be yep. ES6 uh, or 8. Yeah, so. Uh, so I guess it really yeah. makes sense. If, you know, uh, if you start using TypeScript now, you're, you're essentially, you're going to get the benefits of when the V8 engine comes in. I, I'm guessing that when you compile the scripts, it'll, it'll use, um, uh, you know, the the latest coding conventions that work within the script editor. Yeah. So um, once ES six and V eight is uh, ready, um, it's already been announced at Google Cloud Next. Um, then instead of uh, transpiling this from TypeScript to uh, ES3, 
we can uh, transpile it to ES6 or ES7, um, the latest version of V8. Uh, so, uh, so, great way of future proofing. I imagine you know Google will obviously continue to support older scripts, but um, to get the benefits of some of the new ways that you can do stuff and make your code readable. And... Yeah. So it's sort of similar to the way that the web has um, progressed beyond uh, what browsers can support currently. Um, pretty common in the web world where you can uh, code at a feature version of the language spec, uh, but you can make sure that you're supporting browsers such as like IE8, et cetera. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, TypeScript will be able to support local app script development outside of script.google.com and perhaps even um, help create even like a library system uh, mm -hmm. that will allow for better sharing of code um, with auto completion. Um, uh, so we've got a question from Rudy about um, when the translation happens, um, will the JS extension go away to be JS or um, will it stay the same? Um, yeah, so for the translation, um, to use TypeScript, uh, Clasp only reads the uh, TS files and then transpiles those. Um, but you'll see on the in the script editor, um, all the files are still GS files. And yeah. so the actual extension um, is still GS at this point. I'm not sure about uh, when V8 is coming. I don't know what the convention will be there. Sure. I have a question. Um, when it comes to yeah. version control, like GitHub, central repository for code, um, do you have a recommendation or a thought of, of which version to store in the repository? Because I guess I'm kind of thinking of the, the pushing back to the Google Drive is more of a publishing process rather than central repository. Do you have a comment on that? Um, so as as to which back, like where to push your TypeScript file? Yeah, so in other words, if I have the TypeScript version, for lack of a better way of saying it, yeah, should that version be pushed to the central repository? Yeah, so I, ideally the um, the TypeScript version is the source of truth for your project. And then, um, like for example, if you try to, uh, if you, like, for example, we could just copy this example. And let's say just put it up above. Um, some of these might not work. Actually, I think that should be fine. Uh, shoot. If we do that, name is, I'll just skip this example. But let's say we try to push that, that code, um, which has some fancy uh, classes, um, types, and spread operators, et cetera. When we open it, we'll see that the code is is transpiled. It doesn't really look very pretty. Um, mm -hmm. And so like, for example, this was an enum, um, this color. It was, so for example, it'll allow for auto completion like this. Uh, blue, red, or green. Um, and this EDUM construct was transpiled into this sort of uglier mess, which 
we we don't you probably don't want to hand uh maintain this in your repository yeah i agree so you wouldn't push this code you you'd want to push this code okay that makes sense thank you that's a good question and i guess um if you're using class you're already in you know becoming familiar with a, a command line so easy enough to um, start doing git commands as well yeah um so it does the like local editors i think there's a git plugin where you don't need, yeah. need to know the git commands you can just sync uh to github bucket or or whichever um source control you want but uh yeah, for example, if you're using Clasp, Clasp is only a command line tool. It's not an extension mm -hmm. right now. Um, and so it does require a little bit of it's more advanced, requires a little bit of knowledge. So I, I suppose that's one of the things um, just that would be is useful to highlight as well that um, VS Code comes with a lot of extensions. Um, there's a whole marketplace. Of, Bits and pieces yeah. that you can add, um, so you can get additional functionality uh, into VS Code. So you, you can drop in uh, GitHub stuff. Yes, that's a good point. Um, so one of the be benefits of uh, using your own editor is that you are able to leverage the extensions that the community have built. For example, I use ESLint, which is a, a common JavaScript uh, linter, which detects uh, stylistic errors. Um, there's also a beautifier, uh, which will, like format your code. Um, and like things like Markdown Lint, um, IntelliSense for NPM. It's um, a slightly unrelated question that um, uh, one of the comments we got in for the show was, um, um, tips on inline documentation. Uh, does mm -hmm. VS Code have a, a JS doc package that you can use? Um, a JS doc? Yeah, so yeah. for example, like uh, the JS doc um, properties of the spec are like listed here. All right, so um, they're already. So yeah, for example, like the app ram is common. Yeah. Um, which you provide the type, and then it'll probably fail because there's no no two parameters. But um, I think if you try to see a usage of this, it might. See, it'll, it'll show the open the sidebar mm -hmm. in the document, job doc param. So that's very useful. Um, I wanted to show one more thing that I actually was working on last night. Um, so I don't know if it'll work, but let's try it. So, um, so Stackdriver is uh, one of the uh, primary ways to get debug logs into yep. um, with your source control and logging is very important for all languages. Um, one of the things I've been working on is trying to make it easier to uh, log within um, class and basically have a uh, a log system where you can just see the logs being streamed. Um, so let me see. Let me sure make sure it's set up correctly. So the way to set up class logs, I'll do it um, manually. First, you need in your class.json, um, you need to have your project ID. And the way to get your project ID is to, uh, currently you have to use the script editor and go 
to resources cloud platform project. Here you'll see the project ID prefixed with project dash ID. And you copy it here. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, you can actually let's just watch. So you can uh, stream your logs into your terminal. Um, let's see if this works. So it'll periodically look. Um, so let's just do a hello world. So running a function, which will uh, use console.log, which goes to the stack driver logs. Um, it should hopefully, probably the next one, um, takes about 10 seconds in my experience. But uh, you can see uh, log hello was run and produced the output hello. <laughs> and so That's you can, this will like query the stack driver logs every 10 seconds or every six seconds or something. Um, and you could have some like complicated you can also uh, stream as JSON. So if you had some JSON, it'll I mean, it'll show the full mm -hmm. um, output as JSON in case you wanted that. So here, I think we can just like copy and paste this if we really wanted to hardcore to that. Yeah. Um, so that's a feature I uh, built last night, actually. <laughs> Uh, so is it, and so is it being pushed? It's live. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pushed. Um should be live. Uh if not I'll check it right after this. But um nice hopefully it'll you, make uh, nice to have a yeah. totally unscripted exclusive there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so, it's like a banner at the bottom. Breaking new <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um that's the first ever demo of uh, stack driver <laughs> logging, uh, watching uh, live to you on totally unscripted. <laughs> and it worked, yay. And it worked, yeah. <laughs> so so, so a... I'm, I'm imagining like this would be super useful. I mean, you can even have a terminal within your VS code as we saw before. I don't know exactly how to set it up, but um, maybe you could have your logs right in yeah. your editor. Certainly for those uh, doing local script development, I, their, their world is um, increasing at a, a rapid, pace, rapid pace. Is there anything else on the, the roadmap for CLASP that you can talk about? Um, yeah, so I'm trying to, so the auto completion that we saw before, um, so, it works pretty nicely for things like slides app and spreadsheet app. Um, but if you're trying to use an advanced service, like slides dot presentation, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work that well, as you can see. And so one thing I'm working on is I'm creating these definitions so that you can use uh, the advanced services. Uh, so let's see. So you'd probably not um, use it directly, but let's see. Well, I'm not sure exactly how it works. It's too, too new. Um, yeah, well, so anyway, I, I'm basically trying to enable 
for auto completion for advanced services, which allow you to um, use any Google REST API within App Script. So let's say there's not this uh, slides app or spreadsheet app. If you're using um, some Google service, like the Photos API or something that mm -hmm. doesn't have one of these yet, um, well, uh, soon, hopefully, you can have auto completion uh, right in your editor. Would that include Firebase? Um, so I'm not sure it, it might, uh, if it's a standard Google API, well, is it, so I, I take it, it you're has just com compiling the definition of the um, Google API discovery service. Uh, yeah, it's so yeah, it uses the Google API discovery service. Um, but it also, since there's also more APIs than just these ones that Google offers, um, I'm working on these one, these initial ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Well, anyway, if you're interested um, in contributing to the types to help support auto completion locally, uh, I'll I'll post the issue. Um, that has the update date information on the uh, YouTube description. And I guess um, if people are developing their own um, libraries for App Script, as long as they um, uh, create the, the annotation file for it, um, they, you know they can get all complete for their their own libraries as well. Yeah. Um... So I mean, I'm really excited for the day where there's uh, we open up open App Script up to like their uh, guess better libraries that provide uh, auto completion and are easily shareable. Because I think once you have like great auto completion, um, and you have like maybe you just npm install uh, a different library or service you want to use. Um, you don't have to rewrite all, all your code. You can leverage mm -hmm. um, the function or, or the uh, the demo that someone else has written. So please, uh, if you have feature requests for CLASP, if, it's, if you like CLASP or you haven't used CLASP um, for App Script because of one specific thing, please file an issue or upload an issue and I'll definitely uh, try to implement it soon. There's, um, to find out more about class, the, I know the, the GitHub repo has got lots of documentation as well. So I think you've showed some of it as part of the show in terms of, I know you real dipped into it as well in terms of setting up CLASP and um, using TypeScript. Yeah. So uh, if you're interested in using CLASP, I definitely check out the GitHub repo, right? Uh, at Google slash class. Um, and for more advanced documentation, there's a docs folder for how you can use TypeScript or how you can, if you want to contribute to class, uh, how you can develop class, add your own feature, um, et cetera. Um, Alexander again is asking um, examples of how you can push code to two more projects. Cool. Yeah, so we're pushing for multiple projects. Um, right now, there's no uh, native class support. Right now, in your class.json, you have uh, the script ID. And so you could manually change that. Right. Some people um, also just move the files from like class.json or class1.json and class2.json, and then they move it do a MV class one dot JSON to class dot JSON. Um, I think there's a GitHub issue asking for multiple scripts support, and that's something mm. I think is very reasonable, very practical. Um, and I think it's just a matter of how we implement it. 
Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, we should follow up on the GitHub issue and I'm sure I could add that to class so you can have more native support. Well, Grant, that, that's, um, I hope we've um, tantalized and educated our audience um, and hopefully you're going to get a deluge of um, class feature requests and sure. um, hopefully contributions awesome. as well. <laughs> um, yeah, thank, thanks for having me on, on here. Absolute pleasure. And um, I'm sure actually I feel given the the rate that um, Clasp is developing right now, I think um, it won't be too long before we're having to have you back on to uh, talk hmm. about some of the latest features. Yeah, but, sure. Anytime. So thank you, Grant, for your time. I'm conscious that um, I've got some editing to do for this show. So <laughs> Uh, thanks for everyone who's contributed today and um, look forward to seeing you all very soon.